You're right, Amya. I'm here at Trend today to finally get hands on with their Smartbench CNC. If you saw a video of mine not too long ago, they very kindly sent me one out to try. I couldn't fit it in my workshop though, so I'm excited to finally give it a go. But what I wanted to do in that other video was see how fast I could actually assemble it. They reckon you can do it in about four minutes. I've never done it before, so let's see how I get on. I'll put a timer on the screen and let's go. Right, I don't know what the time is yet. I'll have to have a look, but you'll see what it was on screen. Hopefully, I wasn't too far off that four minutes. I think I was quite a way off the four minutes, but as you can see, it really doesn't take that long at all. Um, yeah, I'm well pleased with that. Let's actually get some bits put on and have a go at cutting some today. John, we may have, we may have trend. I've never used the smart bench before. Right. I've had a bunch of questions come through from my viewers as well. Lots of questions yeah, to ask. Sure. As you can see, we've already got loaded up an 18 mil sheet plywood here. Steps, whack it on, and it's pretty much good to go. But there was some other things that we needed to do first, wasn't yeah. there? So one of the most important things we need to do is to secure that sheet down so that it's actually solid on the surface of the slave sheet, which you can see on, underneath, which is in green. And then once it's secured down to that, we lower this beam down onto the surface and make sure that that's nice and solid. And when we lower it down, we make sure the Z head is right in the middle here so that it lowers down nice and evenly, lock it off, and then we're good to go. And we quick little test run up and down, just make sure that it's all running nice and okay. And we're good to go to start setting up and setting our X and Y data points that we've had from our drawing. One of the questions that I did get was you've mentioned about securing it with screws, maybe in the yeah. corners, but if you've got a board that's warped a little bit, how do we actually, do we need to add clamps or? So you shouldn't need to add any clamps whatsoever because the squeezing action of this upper beam and the lower beam there should pull the two together. And that's why it's important not to have a too thicker um, slave sheet on there. So if you had an 18 mil slave sheet, and then you've got a piece of 18 mil on top and you're trying to squeeze 36 mil together. So a thinner slave sheet is the better route. Brilliant, so it just literally flattens it out where the cutter needs to be That's at it, that yeah. moment in time. It's, so as, as it comes along, squeezes it together, it's really solid where it's cutting and it can be loose anywhere else. So we've got our sheet in place. I did do a little bit of, um, I think it's CAD design. I've never really used it properly, but I designed it on Vectric. Um, I've got VCarve Pro, Got it all set up on there. I've got my files ready to go. There is a couple of options that we can use to get it sent yeah. over, isn't there? Yeah, so to send your file to the machine, you can use Wi-Fi if you've got Wi-Fi in your workshop, or you can use a USB stick on the side of the console. So now what we're gonna do is, now we've got our files sitting on there, we need to tell it where X and Y are zero, and also where Z zero as well. And also we need to put the cutter into the spindle as well. So this spindle is specifically designed to be used in a machine. And the spindle will give us feedback from the spindle to the console and let us know if it's getting overloaded. For example, maybe you've got a blunt cutter or you've chosen a too deep a cut. So that's really good, powerful feature on the machine. And also we can do things like increase the feed speed and the spindle speed on the fly as it's actually machining. So you can be listening for that nice sweet sound of cutting and then you can adjust it as it's going along. Oh well, so if you think, oh actually, it's got a bit more go in it, or ramp give it up it a, a bit, bit more. <laughs> or if it starts squealing, it's like, oh, best back it off a bit. That's right, yeah, <laughs> so it's got, and then you can keep your eye on the, the overload as well. Brilliant. So we've got to set up our file on there, haven't we? Yeah, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go and select our file, and there's a few questions it asks, so it's very good at prompting you with questions, just to make sure You've done everything correctly and in the right order as well. So we're going to uh, choose our file from the list of files. So the file you've just downloaded will always be the first one on that list. Oh. So we can just go, good to go. And then on the screen, you'll get a, a visual representation of some of the cut it's going to do. We'll press the go button. And what we're going to do now, we've got the go button going. Choose whether we're going to use the stylus or we're going to use the router. Now the stylus is a great one for doing vinyl cuts. So you can do it as well as a router, you've now got this vinyl cutter and also you could use it to draw a drawing that's as big as the sheet size you've got on there. And now we're into that screen, which is that 
point where we press go and, and it's ready going to, to go. start start machining so press go and we're ready to start machine so gotcha. here we go we're going to press go and what you'll hear is you'll hear the spindle move down and then it's going to move down lower to within the, the safe working distance that we've set up in our software and then the spindle will start. Away it goes. now i need to switch on the extractor So the CNC has done its job and it's cut all the pieces out. There are some little tabs that I'm keeping all the pieces secure so they don't go flying off when the CNC is cutting. So we need to get those cut free. But first, I'm gonna to have to release the lock on this mechanism here. Lift this up slightly. And this is just so I can slide the plywood free. I should be able to slide this sheet out now. And then I can get all the pieces cut out. While I was at Trend, I was given the opportunity to get hands-on with their brand new T12 Rotaf, so I wasn't going to pass that up, was I? So I opted for the joinery to use a 6mm slot cutter, along with some pieces of 6mm MDF to act as loose floating tenons. It's a method that I've used for a while now for joining sheet material together, and I do think it warrants its own video, because I think it's a nice way to do it. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button, so when I create the video of my method for joining sheet material, you won't miss it. But for now, back to Trend, get the slots cut, and get the cupboards assembled. So I've gone ahead and I've got all the slots put into the pieces now. So this should go together quite simply. What I'm gonna be using is six mil MDF and I've kind of made these into their own kind of loose floating tenons. I've already put one in to show you and I've just hammered that in so it fully seats inside. You would normally put wood glue on it, but I'm just gonna dry assemble these because then I'll get them back home and I'll get them painted and it'll be a lot easier that way. So for now, I'll get the rest of them put in and let's get these cupboards dry assembled. So I've gone ahead and I've got the MDF pieces put in place and now it should pretty much just slot together with any luck anyway. Seems to be all right. When I get some glue and the clamps on it, that'll come together really well. But as you can see from a dry assembly, that's gone together pretty good. So I'll get the other one put together, then we can put the legs on and then we should be able to see how it actually stacks. So now that the box is assembled, I just need to add some little wooden dowels and those will go into the pockets that was already milled for us on the CNC. Then I'll be able to put the A-frame legs into place. It should all slot together and then we'll be able to see how they stack. <laughs> Now I'll be honest, I've been really indecisive with these. As you saw, I've got them glued up and my idea was I was gonna paint the cabinets and paint the legs. I knew I'd always want the legs to be matte black, but I could not settle on what color to do the cupboards itself. So I've kind of thought I'll leave them for now, I'll get them assembled so I can at least get this video out and show you the process on the CNC and, and the interesting bits at least. I can always paint these another time, but let's show you how they actually stack. So with the A-frame, the bottom of the A should sit into the top of the mating A. Just like that. And with these actually seated so well, obviously being cut on a CNC, it's gonna be perfect. Then really rigid. So when you're knocking this about, you've got no chance of the cupboards coming apart unless you really wanted to lift them off. 
But what I really like is something like this, you could either have them sitting side by side and maybe put a top on to act as a little bench to sit by the end of your bed perhaps, or stack them up like this to be more of a, a usual cupboard height. But if you stack four on top of each other, they actually end up being six foot in height. And I think it's kind of like a locker wardrobe kind of style. Um, whack some doors on the front and you can go to town with them, but I'm well chuffed with these. So that's it then guys. I want to say a massive thank you to Trend and in particular to Sam and to John for helping me out on the day, for organising everything, just getting everything sorted. And I want to say a massive thank you particularly for John for answering all my questions, any issues that I'd got. It is really simple using the CNC, but as you know, when you've never used something before, it's always reassuring having somebody on hand to answer all the questions that you got and he was a massive help. So cheers for that, John. I'll leave a link to Trend's website in the description and of course, a link to the Smartbench CNC as well if you're interested. I wanna make it clear, this video isn't sponsored at all. I wasn't paid to go to Trend. I wasn't paid for this video, just for pure transparency. But I really do think the Smartbench is a great bit of kit, especially for the smaller workspaces. Even though it won't fit in my workshop, it is a great CNC. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job as well. So if you wanna check it out, links in the description. If you like this video, make sure you click that thumbs up, leave a comment if you've got any questions, share your thoughts. And if you've not subscribed to the channel already, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the bell notification next to it. That way you'll never miss a video as soon as I upload one. Cheers for watching.